Today I'm going to teach you how to play Unmatched. I'm going to teach you how to play Unmatched on the Battle of Legends Volume 1 expansion. But there are currently seven expansions. I'm sorry, eight. I have seven of them. The two character expansions both have two player boards in them. The four character expansions have four player boards in them. Choose a board. All boards have two sides as well. Choose a board, choose a side, lay on the table. Each player chooses a character, gets that character's deck of cards, that character and that character's sidekicks, dials, that character's player card or character card, their character's mini, and their sidekick's mini. Incidentally, with Battle of Legends Volume 1, one of the characters is Medusa, which has three sidekicks, the Harpies. When there's more than one sidekick, they only have one hit point each, so they don't have a separate dial like any of the characters that have one sidekick do. And in the Battle of Legends Volume 1, Alice is the only one that has an extra accessory piece, uh, but the other expansions, a couple of them have extra accessory pieces as well. So whatever your character you pick, that's what you start with. If you choose to play four player, the rules actually state that you need to play two teams. If you choose to play two player, you should probably use a board that's for two players, but you can use a four player board. Starting with the youngest player, he or she places their main character's figure. See, there's a one. So they place theirs on one, but then they can place that character's sidekicks on any spaces in the same zone as the main character. In this board, number one is blue. And you can see there's green, tan, purple, red, and brown. You can see the multiple spaces. This counts as all three colors. This counts as two colors. You can see purple actually goes from here all the way through here, all the way up to here. But wherever you lay your main character, the sidekick must be in the same zone. So it could be over here. Incidentally, I think you could play four-player free-for-all. We did, and it seemed to work fine. But it says you should be teams if you're playing four players, and the way the laying the pieces on the board goes there is the youngest player first, then the youngest player on the second team next, then the oldest player on the first team, then the oldest player on the second team last lays their main figure and their sidekicks. This may matter strategically, so you should follow that order. If you're doing a free-for-all like we did, we just started with the youngest player and then went clockwise around the board from there. Once everybody has their pieces on the board, everyone draws five cards from their deck, puts them in their hand. Incidentally, you start with five cards, but you can have up to seven cards in your hand. But if you end your turn with more than seven cards in your hand, you must discard down to five. The objective is, of the game is to be the last player standing, which obviously means to have the last main character miniature left on the board. You can kill a sidekick, the main character mini stay, but if you kill a mini and there's a sidekick left, doesn't matter, they both are removed. Obviously these are hit point dials. This is Alice, she starts with 13 hit points, she gets to zero, Alice is done. Starting once again with the youngest player, player one. You have an option of three actions to choose on your turn, and you can take two actions on your turn. Actually, you not can take two actions on your turn. You must take two actions on your turn. The only one that you'll be able to do each and every turn, no matter what, is maneuver. And all you do in maneuvering is draw a card, put it in your hand, and then look at your character's card 
to see how far they can move, and you can move up to that amount. So for Alice and Jabberwock, they can move zero, one, or two spaces. You don't have to split them up either. Each separate piece can move zero, one, or two spaces. You can only move between spaces that are connected with black lines. And like I said, you don't have to move at all. But if you choose maneuvering, which is moving, you always have to draw a card. The reason this matters is because this is your energy, basically. Once your deck is depleted, you are exhausted, which means all your cards will be in your discard pile. And if you have to go to draw a card again and you have no more cards to draw, you take both you and your sidekick take two points, two hit points of damage every time you have to draw a card and you can't. So use these next two possible actions uh, wisely because you won't always be able to do them. Uh, one of the other two possible actions is to scheme. The reason you're limited with this is because of two reasons. One, if you look at your cards, there's a yellow lightning bolt in the corner. This is a scheme card. So first of all, if you have no scheme cards in your hand, you can't scheme. And then secondly, there'll be a description of what the scheme is. And sometimes you won't be able to do it because of limitations on the board or where other players may be. But you must be able to do whatever your card says to play a scheme card. And it'll also say the timing of it after another player attacks or something like that. So they're limited as well. And then the final action option you have is to attack. Um, th these are the only four differences, uh, different types of cards. The yellow lightning I already said is scheming. This is a defense card. This is an attack card. And this is called a versatile card. It can be used for attack or defense. Um, and then there can be multiple options for each of these because you can only use these cards for whatever character you're using that card on. So I can only use this card, this scheme card for Alice, Alice, Alice. This one can only be used for the Jabberwock. If they say any, they can be used for both. But that's also why they're limited, while, um, why uh, they can be limiting as well because of who they can be used for as well and who you want to attack with and stuff like that. Um, also with your place on the board, Alice is a melee, Jabberwock's a melee. Uh, Medusa has ranged. Sorry, it's upside down, but you can see it says that on her character card. Basically the difference between melee and ranged is melee you have to be directly adjacent beside a opposing player you want to attack. But ranged can attack anywhere in the same zone. So even if Medusa was here, she could still attack Sinbad in this situation. So fairly simple, but that's also why it's limiting. So if you're in a position where you can't attack and you can't scheme, then you'll have no choice on your turn but to maneuver twice which will get you closer to exhausted quicker and can be dangerous. Not to mention, if you have too many cards in your hand, you have to discard them. You'll be taking all your cards options away as well as you go. Attacking is simple. This is Alice in blue and King Arthur in red. I want to, actually let's put, him over, put her over here beside Sinbad in yellow, because I'm on this side of the board, or orange, I'm sorry. So Alice wants to attack Sinbad. All she has to do is pick a card from her hand. Again, this is an attacking card. Lay it on the table and say I'm attacking you. Then Sinbad chooses one of his cards. And to defend, you can only use a defense or a versatile card. Lays it on the table as well. This is actually a rule. They both have to lay them on the table. Then it's also a rule in the box saying they have to be turned over simultaneously. I don't think that really matters. Once they're both laid on the table, it doesn't uh, really affect that too much. So we actually made it to where the attacker would reveal first since they're attacking, and then the defender reveals next. 
It's very simple. Alice is attacking with a three. Sinbad is defending with a one. Three minus one is two. Sinbad takes two damage. Simple as that. Then you'll also see on the cards there are special abilities. Hers is Snickersnack. You'll see in front of the description of this special ability, uh, it'll say after combat, during combat, before combat, or immediately. Um, so you have to use it at the appropriate time. Hers is after combat. If you won the combat, look at your opponent's hand, choose one of the cards, and have for them to discard. Easy to understand. Sinbad's is regroup. After combat, draw one card. If you won the combat, draw two cards instead. He lost, so he'd only draw one. Incidentally, if there's a tie, obviously if Alice would attack with three, he would have defended with three. No damage is taken by Sinbad. It's a tie. He technically won uh, regarding this description. And then secondly, if there's an immediately description in front of uh, what the ability is, defender goes uh, is applied first if they both would say immediately because one will say completely negate your other the other player's ability something like that so it matters who's first so defenders basically get the advantage as far as ties are concerned you'll also see on the card these numbers almost halfway down to the right these are boost numbers the only way boost numbers are naturally used in this game is to boost movement. So, hypothetically, Alice started here. Say she wanted to attack Medusa. She's four spaces away. She can only move up to two. So she has this card in her hand. You can choose to discard this card to boost your movement, whatever that number is. So she discards this card, and then she can move four. Naturally, that's the only way that number is used, to boost movement. There are also, this is similar to Magic the Gathering in the way that the abilities description will break the rules all the time. Sometimes it'll say, use one of your cards to boost an attack. So in that case, you discard this to boost an attack by two, stuff like that. But all the different characters have different abilities, as you can imagine. They also have a main ability here. And with Alice, that's what this token is used for if she, to show if she's small or big. And if she is big, she gets two added to her attacks. If she's small, she gets two added to her defense. And the Alice player gets to choose whether Alice starts the game big or small. But then the only other way this turns over is on cards. You can see on this one it says chain size. So you can use this scheme card to move up to three spaces and then it says to chain size, which isn't an option. So then you'd flip it over. So you start how you want, but then it'll just, the cards will dictate how they're played to what size she is. And there are other characters that have these kind of special extra tokens and abilities. They're all described on the cards. It's simple. Also, there are some boards that have special differences as well. For example, a Little Red Riding Hood and Beowulf board is actually Little Red Riding Hood's grandma's house. So there's little uh, door tokens that actually costs one movement to open doors. Um, it doesn't cost any movements to close the doors, but you can't close the door if there's a main character piece adjacent to either side of the door. Um, so like I said, similar to the characters, the separate boards will also have little extra different things about it that'll be explained. You'll have to find out board per board, but they're all simple and minimal. Uh, but other than that, every single board and every single character can be chosen to play with. And in my opinion, we're going to try to play up to eight players at some point to see if that works just by putting two four-player boards together. So that's it. 
unmatched. Uh, it's very similar to Star Wars Epic Duels, if you're familiar with that. But it's a great game. Lots of fun. They actually just um, announced a couple more expansions. I think another one that's currently out... Well, I definitely know of one that's currently out, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Which is a four-character, four-player board expansion. And then also, um, I'm not sure if it's out yet or if it's on pre-order... There's a Battle of Legends, Volume 2. And then there's now there's two Marvel Unmatched Editions as well. One of them is Hell's Kitchen with Daredevil, Bullseye, and Elektra, I believe. And the other one, I can't think of the name of it, but it has Ghost Rider, Luke Cage, and Moon Knight in it. So all of them very cool. A lot of interchangeable ways to fight. It's very cool to have, you know, the Invisible Man fight Bruce Lee or, you know, Deadpool fight Dracula. It's very interesting how it all plays out. It's very thematic with the cards matching what you'd imagine the abilities and tricks the characters you're familiar with would do. But that's about it. Unmatched. Let's get together and play it. <laughs> 